it will be weird from Kuka's smell to crown, right? You might think. So the Kuka is uh, Philip Kuka is a uh, is a prof oh is a professor in City University of Hong Kong, and Steve Smell, his colleague now, at CTU. No, it's, he came back. He came back? Oh, yeah, Steve uh, Smell please. came back to Hong Kong. Oh, and Kramoto, Kramoto is a, 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 a physicist in the University of Kyoto. He's now the medical professor in the physics department. So actually, the real subtitle is a plucking and synchronization. OK, let me tell you why I choose this weird uh, title. Uh, actually, 2002, Steve Strogatz wrote down the paper, a survey paper on synchronization from Kramoto to Kropot. Uh, Kropot was a, a physicist uh, in the University of Pittsburgh. So if you combine these two titles, then from Fukushima to Kropot. Okay. So first, uh, I'll show you some. I have to explain what the flocking and synchronization are. So I have to show, I'll show you some short movie and then tell you something about this uh, flocking and synchronization and conclude my talk. Uh, probably some of you may have seen the movie. I don't know whether Marsha saw the movie or not, but uh, here is the uh, This movie I, I, I downloaded from some website. Uh, it's supposed to be a bird, whether you believe or not. So it's, uh, it's called clocking of bird. So the bird move as a group in one uh, with the same speed, same velocity. Second thing is the swarming of fishes. So the flocking, swarming uh, are the same meaning. And this is so this is a cyanobacteria which is sensitive to the light. So the light is in this direction. You see the bacteria move to the, toward the, the light direction. But you still, you saw some of these isolated guys, they don't move. But eventually, when this main group hit this isolated group, they will move together. So oh. this is a real experiment done by uh, Biology in Stanford University, uh, the Department of, uh, of Biology. So I got this, uh, this file from Doron Navy. You see what happened to this. human society, and you see this uh, grouping behavior. And also, 
So that's the, the movie for flocking. So you, you, you might have some feeling what the flocking is now. And then let me show you. This is a, this is a pendulum, a kind of. You see, they just oscillate with their natural frequency. Phenomena basically tells you suppose we have a, a system of uh, self perfect particles, so initially they move with their velocity randomly, but for certain mechanism, by certain mechanism, then eventually they move with the same velocity. So they I call the so it's transition from this ordered state to ordered state, I call the flux. Synchronization is the story on the rotors on, S, on the circle. Okay, so if, if you have oscillatory system, your uh, your phase of the oscillator is a uh, ch periodically change, right? So you can visualize the uh, the oscillator like a rotor on a circle. So 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 you have many oscillators on the circle. They move. They 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 rotate along the circle. So that's the synchronization. So then the natural question is, what is the relationship between this uh, flocking and synchronization? Since there is a certain relation, right? So flocking is, kind of, is, a, is, a, is a concentration in a certain, say, velocity. The flocking and the synchronization is concentration on the uh, phase or frequency. So, so the flocking represents some phenomena in which self-propelled individuals organize into other motion. So, uh, it violates the law of second, uh, second thermodynamics. If you look at just this uh, isolated system, but if you uh, consider interaction between the, the system to the environment, then eventually the second law of thermodynamics is not violated. But if you just look at the, this closed system, then it's viable. And also, the, uh, so the kind of flocking is a concentration phenomenon in some phase variable. And so there was a lot of work from the community of biology in, from 1970s. And from physics community, what this, this kind of work was started from the, the D-Check in 1995, so it's quite recent work. And in applied analysis that we are belong to, it started uh, from 2000. Say. So I'm, more or less, I'm, 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 I'm looking at this Cooper smell model. So in 2007, Cooper and Smell introduced some phenomenological agent-based model based on the following principle. Okay, so it's not a physical principle, it's kind of assumption. Each in self profile particles adjust its velocity according to the velocity of each neighbor, assumed to be whole group, so it's a mean field interaction. So Xi is the position of the ice agent, Vi is the velocity of ice agent. I, I assume that all agents have the same, same math, same one. Then if you just use the Newton's equation, uh, this is obvious. So this should be the force term. So the, the Cooper smells answers for the force is just like the relaxation part. Okay? So it's not right from the first principle of physics, it's ad hoc model at this moment. And in 
particular, Puka Smeo used this so-called interaction communication weight, Psi to be this edge, this this quant, this answers. Okay, so it's it's uniformly bounded by one and decay algebraically. Uh, so he published this, this paper in I three three transaction and automatic control. Uh, then, so let me let me give you definition for the flocking of this and in and part the system. So the flocking means uh, they form a group. That means uh, the diameter of the uh, this particle system is uniformly bounded. Okay. The second thing is the velocity alignment. So asymptotically, all agents' velocity approach the same value. Uh, let me briefly review the Foucault's L2 theory. So. So in order to measure how the fracking occurs, how much occurs, he introduced certain T similarity quantity. Here is called gamma zero and lambda. So gamma uh, measures the, the kind of T similarity in the position. Lambda measures the T similarity in the velocity. So, so basically what we want to show is this gamma is uniformly bounded and lambda goes to zero as in time. Okay. So for this special type of uh, communication way, they prove, depending on this uh, decay rate, so two beta is a decay rate, so two beta less than one, which corresponds to long range interaction case, then as long as initial configuration is, is bounded okay, in velocity and position, the the flocking occurs as in time. However, when 2 beta equal to 1, which is the critical case, like Coulomb potential 1 over R, then you need certain restriction on, on the uh, initial configuration. So if 2 beta is greater than 1, which means it's a short range interaction, <coughs> also you need this constraint on initial configuration. So. How, how they prove? They actually they, they use the elementary energy estimate, this L2 theory. Now, now, so then the natural question uh, whether can we assume more general form of the communication wave instead of these special answers? The second thing is somehow this critical case, do we need this uh, assumption on initial configuration? Okay. So for you, flocking is the lambda as function of time goes to zero? Yes. Lambda as function of time goes to zero. Right. That's one. Right. And gamma is uniquely bounded. And the little lambda is right in number two. Oh, sorry. That's the uh, coupling strength in the uh, here. Is coupling strings. So, so in particular, if you had a milling formation, that would not be flocking. Uh, in, in, in this case, uh, yeah, it's, it's still flocking, but uh, this model doesn't give you this milling situation, unfortunately. So I'll come back to that question later. Uh, one more question: you, and the results that they prove this is independent of the size of M. Unfortunately, it de dependent on size size of M. Okay, because I didn't see it in the statement, so that's why. Yeah. I was yeah. Because, yeah. All right. So, so actually, in, in their model, there is no N here. But I put the N in here. So that's why it disappeared. But if you go back to their model, they, there is N dependence. So uh, I'll come back to that question also again. So and then, so there are two questions. So can we use more general? Form of the uh, communication way, independent of special answers. So, so how we did? So we introduced. So if you have a many particle system, then the natural thing to look at is uh, look at the, uh, the the motion of central velocity coordinate, right? A uh, central mass coordinate. So you first introduce this uh, special average and the velocity average. 
and then the fluctuation around this average, like this, uh, kind of uh, standard deviations. Okay. So remember, we have a uh, we have a uh, 60 n equations. Okay. Now I'm, I don't want to look at this big system. So what we do first, uh, we we consider the dynamics of the average and the, this uh, standard deviation. Standard deviation is two scalar quantities, okay? So, and then this is Kukos male, and they is, you can see that this equation is, in, is invariant on the translation. Therefore, the macroscopic equation is decoupled from the uh, microscopic equation, and also this uh, microscopic fluctuation equation is, is the same with the uh, original equation except the constraint. The sum of things I have equals to zero, sum of the fluctuation in velocity is zero. Okay? And then, so, so remember the initial configuration and also communication way will affect your the asymptotic dynamics, right? Then natural question how they are related. So, so we first uh, look at the, uh, we first derive the, the system of differential inequality for the uh, standard deviations, the spatial and the velocity. It turns out uh, they satisfy these two scalar differential inequality. Okay. So our purpose is we want to show that the standard deviation in the space is uniformly bounded, but standard deviation in the velocity goes to zero asymptotically fast. Then the question, then the problem is here. This is nonlinear. If you, if you know this guy, then just Grunard inequality gives you exponential convergence. And remember, Pusai is non positive and non-increasing with respect to this argument. So the, so the main thing is, once you have unicum bound on in the special standard deviation and then you plug into here and then psi of that guy uh, so so remember once you can show this that psi to scoot and sigma of x this uh this guy is psi of 2 squared n sigma infinity, and you have a minus, minus. So if you use this upper bound, then the corona inequality gives you exponential decay in the standard deviation of the velocity. So the question is how to, how to derive this uniform estimate in the special standard deviation? So how we did, we introduced certain functional, uh, for example, the, this plus case is uh, kind of diaphanal functional. So we introduced this diaphanal functional, which is the sum of the uh, velocity standard deviation plus minus of this uh, communication wave. And the special velocity uh, standard deviation appear here. So, <coughs> By direct calculation, you can show that this guy is not increasing with respect to this Fukushima uh, flow. And also, it satisfies this Lyapunov estimate, stability estimate. So, and by using these two estimates, one can prove that if initial configuration and communication way satisfy this simple inequality, then you can show that there is a uniform uh, upper bound for speci spatial standard deviation. And also, this uniform bound is determined by this equation. Okay? And also, so this gives you, again, this exponential decay in the standard deviation of the velocity. You see, but unfortunately, there is an independence here also. So that's the. Uh, the problem, but nevertheless, for fixed n, for example, if psi equal to our critical case, 1 over s, then you, you see that if psi is 1 over s, then this is a 1 over square root 
2 squared n s, so this is infinity. So for critical case, for any bounded initial configuration, you still have uh, exponential convergence, F exponential flocking. So that, uh, that improves this Kruko-Smith's estimate here. Okay, so in fact, this is unconditional. Okay, so you can improve it. And you can do more, actually. So using formal PBG KY hierarchy, you can derive, formally, you can derive this so called Grassoff type uh, equation, but this is a disoperative. Uh, and, and then with Aitan, Tadmore, we, we studied the say, floppy estimate for this Kinan model. So, So as long as the initial configuration is C1 and the unit bounding, the bounding complex, uh, complex support, then for any finite time t, you have a unique crest solution. And also, this, uh, this function of decay exponentially depending. But here, we have this uh, a core as a critical exponent. But in Kruger's scenario, you have one half. So there's a, a distance. It, actually, that was removed. Improved. This estimate was improved by Carillo and other people right after our work. And also they used L infinity estimate, which is crucial because in this L2 theory, all estimate depends on the number of agents. But if you use L infinity estimate, the number of N dependence is gone. Okay. And also, uh, you, you can derive this kinetic model more rigorously using this particle approximation and measure value setting that was done by uh, myself and the Jane Wu Liu last uh, last year. And also, you can do uh, you can take a moment of this kinetic model, and then you just look at the first three uh, first uh, three moment, then. The equation looks like this. Okay. But if you use this monokinetic ansatz, uh, can I have other one? Okay. Yeah. So if you use this monokinetic ansatz, then they are the, the moment system just becomes these uh, three equations. The interesting is. Uh, this is a pressure gas system with flocking dissipation. So we have a non-local source term, which is not standard. Uh, so it, actually, the cycle to one case, you have uh, this uh, actually bogus equation with uh, uh, linear dam uh, relaxation. And then let me let me tell you some weak points of this Kruger-Smith flocking model first. It's, it's an ad hoc model. It's not derived from the first principle of physics. The second thing is, in Fukushima model, we are basically we are seeing the point particles, so they can collide. But if you want to apply the theory to real application, it's very dangerous, right? If you apply to the uh, unmanned air, air vehicle or car, whatever, they should not collide. So, and and also. If you use the, uh, there are too many equilibrium configurations. Uh, just, uh, just, just translation, motion are all equilibrium configuration. Too many. So that's the, also the, the weak point in some sense. And also the asymptotic dynamics too simple. Just translation. So it, it cannot describe this meaning uh, solution. So. So now people are working on how to generalize this uh, Fukushima model to describe these realistic uh, situations. That's on the on the on, on the study now. So yeah. Yes. Can I ask you something? What does the first basic work to this group? Well, this uh, what do you have in mind? Yeah. like uh, just a Newton equation, classical Newton dynamics with a certain potential. I think that there is a selection of particles themselves, right? Yeah. So 
Uh, actually, you will see your name. Okay. We'll go back to the question, actually. Right. So, because uh, when the Fuka Smell wrote down this paper, they, actually they didn't uh, tell anything. And also, I, I asked Fuka how you derive the, the model. Just, just use it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so first question is the derivation of Fuka Smell from physical model, some sense. So that's a joint work with uh, Latangio Rubino from Blanquilla and uh, Marsha Slenda. Actually, sorry, this is Kaist here. Uh, so our motivation is, 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 is to work by these three uh, physicists. So look at the, uh, the one uh, the chain of one dimension of the chain of uh, oscillators. Okay. So, Xi, Vi is a, just a real number, uh, real value function. So this is okay. And you, you consider epsilon as a mass of the oscillator. Okay? And then you, you have this uh, 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 damping, just a linear damping. Okay? And phi is the, the first potential. Okay? So in this model, uh, somehow you, you are okay, right? Okay, I mean, I like it because I was thinking all the time, there must be two time scales yeah. in the problem. The yeah. one which is you observe things in, and the, the type of interaction between the particles which should be much faster yeah. to right. synchronize their motion right. than whatever you observe in the average. Yeah. And therefore, I'm mean, introducing epsilon here, I'm happy because right. you said there are two, there are two time scale phenomena. Yeah. Interaction time scale phenomena and average time scale phenomena. I don't know it until infinity because the synchronizing yeah. Yeah. it. So actually, the, once the Masha sent me email that I don't know how you found, but the Masha at this uh, discussed at uh, this damping, and in front of damping you have one of epsilon, epsilon and take derivative. Okay, which is the case. So uh, don't don't ask me why I take derivative of this model. Okay, actually ask Masha why <laughs> you take derivative. So you take derivative this guy with respect to t. Then you have this, okay? You have a here, you have derivative of here, you move to here. This one, you have second derivative potential and times this guy, okay? Let epsilon is zero formally, okay? Then you recover something like uh, Foucault's mail, okay? With this uh, uh, communication wave. For example, if you take this special uh, uh, force, then you, you recover the Foucault's mail. That, um, so dx i t this v i d v i d t this is the lambda of n some j one psi x j minus i that's v j minus v i okay that's focus mail. Actually, uh, this one can be made rigorously using Tikhonov theory. So that's the 1D case. So initially we thought how oh, 1D, that's enough. And then uh, the, the Latangio and uh, noticed that, well, you can do for the 1D case as well. But if you take more, so this is multi-D version. This is multi version. But if you take any general poten potential, you take derivative, then you have Hessian, where then it becomes so messy. But if you look at just radial symmetric potential, then you can do a similar thing, actually. So, uh, okay, so if you look at, if you take uh, derivative with respect to t in the second equation, then you, you have this. Uh, there is a typo here, but but if you choose like harmonic potential, it turns out this guy becomes one, this guy becomes zero, and so you have a kind of making equation that uh, Professor uh, Javaras talked about in the previous talk, okay, for special k equal to identity, and 
But if you, you can classify the admissible class of potentials so that you can guarantee the flocking. So, so, so we derive more general multi-D Foucault smell type flocking model with this new uh, term, actually. And also you can, you can do uh, this uh, flocking estimate. Now, let me go back to synchronization. Uh, synchronization uh, is, is mean, mean, meaning is the adjustment of rhythms of oscillating object due to their weak interaction. So you can see lots of examples from outside. Uh, so uh, so the, the phase model for synchronization was, uh, the, I put the quark guy here, but I still don't know how what's the contribution of quark guy in this work. But uh, uh, some week ago, when I gave a talk at uh, Postec, the uh, Sergei Borotin point out there's something related to the quartile. Uh, so I'm still uh, understanding what ha what that means. Uh, but this Adler, which Robert Adler, actually uh, did uh, this uh, prototype model in 1946, but his work is, was completely forgotten. And his paper was reproduced, reprinted in 19... Uh, 73. And then the Alpha did something, actually, it did the important thing, and the Kramoto introduced his mother in 1975. So, again, we are looking at the uh, weekly coupled unicycle oscillators on the circle. And each oscillator, the natural frequency of oscillator is uh, drawn from the uh, probability distribution function, z of omega. Okay, so this is the, uh, because it's a circle, you can represent the position as a polar coordinate and uh, the theta k is called phase, derivative of theta k is called frequency. So if there is no coupling, there is no interaction, then the, uh, the phase uh, just rotate with a constant frequency. How Kramer uh, derived his model, he starts from the complex ginzburg lambda equation with this coupling term here. Okay? This is uh, omega is natural frequency. And then numerically you can, you can see this one has a, a linear cycle which is S1. So asymptotically all QI rotate around the unit circle, so you can be, you can um, write down the QI to be this polar coordinate, and you plug this guy into here, compare the imaginary part, then you derive. You can see there is a simple the uh, system. Okay, so this omega i is a natural frequency, k is the coupling strength, and is the number of oscillator and we have a sign function, okay? So, and then, what, there are many references, especially the community of phys uh, statistical physics. Uh, most statistical physics in this country working on Kramato and related model. So how the Kramato study this, uh, this model, so the chronotor, the set I dot equal to omega i plus k, I use k here, k of n, sum sine zeta j set i, okay? Okay, so chronotor introduced so-called order parameter, which is the average of the, the location of the oscillator. And for spray state means the oscillator just locate uniformly on the circle. <coughs> then by cancellation, this quantity becomes zero. So R equal to zero is complete incoherent state. If oscillator just concentrate one point, then R equal to one, then you have a complete phase synchronization. So somehow the modulus of this quantity measures the synchronization. Okay. And he, in the last n limit, uh, we call mean field limit, 
he showed that there is critical coupling strength Kc, such that if strength of the coupling is less than Kc, the complete co incoherent state is uh, stable. But above this critical strength, the complete incoherent state is unstable. So there is a bifurcation at this uh, coupling strength. Okay. So it's, uh, he showed that there is a phase transition. And for certain uh, particular uh, distribution function of natural frequency, you can actually calculate the rigorous explicit form of these critical uh, coupling strengths. Now, uh, so let me, so this is the, uh, this is the complete phase synchronization. This is a spray state. So my question here is, for given any, for given distri distri uh, initial configuration of oscillator, I want to find the condition on initial configuration leading to this conflict phase synchronization or conflict frequency synchronization. Okay? So I want to find the, the condition on initial configurations. Uh, here's the, the definition of conflict phase, conflict uh, frequency. So, again, okay, I I know these two models, two, uh, maybe three years, uh, 2007, this October or something, so it's uh, two and a half years ago. I know these two models, but I cannot correlate these two models in one framework, okay? It's something similar, but not quite. Actually, the bridge from Fukushima to Kramoto was, uh, was second part of our paper with Marshall and other two Italian mathematicians. So here's Kramoto. Omega i is a stationary random variable uh, drawn from some given distribution function. Okay. So again, we just take a derivative of this guy. Okay. And then so derivative of this uh, frequency means this one. This is a stationary. So if you take time derivative, then it's gone. And then you have a, by chain rule, you have a psi becomes cosine, this one, this. Now you see the uh, relation. The same thing with Cooper snail, except this uh, communication wave can be negative. Okay? So for, for certain case, certain configuration, you can always guarantee that this uh, uh, com communication rate is uh, non-negative, then you can use the, this uh, same story as you did for, as we did for Fukushima. So we did. So suppose the standard deviation of the initial configuration of this oscillator system satisfy this uh, constraint, then the uh, standard deviation of the frequency goes to zero exponentially fast. And then I actually after I, I, I we obtained this work, actually I talked to the physicist in my university and then he immediately pointed out, oh there's n dependence. So n goes to infinity, your admissible initial configuration just shrink to one point, which is trivial uh, initial. So unfortunately there's n dependence on initial data. But at the time, uh, okay. Now, so we, to, in, to, to get rid of this n dependence, you need a t other strategy, which is independent of the number of oscillators. So uh, here's the uh, uh, alternative strategy. We consider diameter of these initial configurations, so phase space and frequency. So basically, what we want to show is you want to show that uh, for complete Phase synchronization, you want to show that the diameter in phase goes to zero. For complete frequency synchronization, you want to show that diameter of frequency goes to zero. Okay, so in order to do this, we, we study dynamical system for these two quantities. Okay, now this is just diameter, so it's independent of the number of uh, oscillators. So somehow this is L-infinity approach. 
is motivated by uh, these two uh, works. Right? So in this work, we, we, we show that there's a maximum principle for crooked smell. And uh, this actually, at the same time, they didn't, uh, the, in this paper, they didn't specify maximum principle, but they used the same idea to, to, to go from the crooked smell to, uh, the, from particle crooked smell to kinetic crooked smell. So, so, so we can use this uh, I, philosophy to using an infinity approach. So then we might ask, why diameter? So if you look at two oscillator system uh, here, and then uh, you, you can see the difference of the phase and frequency, it turns out this, this two equation becomes one equation. This is a sample. You can, you can find the explicit formula. Actually, that was done by Adler in 1946. But if you use the Mathematica, just immediately give you the formula. But he did it by hand. So, so somehow this a difference kind of a diameter, right? So the natural thing to generalize is just look at the diameter. What about last particle, last oscillator system? Um, again, you you can uh, you consider the average quantity and the fluctuations. So the average quantities just satisfy this uh, this constant speed of this rotation on the circle. The fluctuation satisfies the same equation, and then for a regular purpose, we just take derivative of this guy to get this one. OK, so uh, you consider maximal and mini minimal and maximal fluctuations, and then the diameter is just difference of these extremal fluctuations, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to derive some differential inequality for these two quantity uh, by using by deriving differential inequality for these extremal uh, fluctuations. So for identical oscillator, that means all oscillators are the same species, so they have the same uh, natural frequency. Okay, so first thing that you can do, you first uh, look notice the, the invariance, the existence of invariant set. So if initial phase configuration, the diameter is less than pi, that means basically all oscillator is located on the half circle, then the diameter doesn't grow. Why? That's easy to see here. For example, I is the maximum fluctuation, then as long as this is uh, less than, this is greater than minus pi to zero, this is negative, so the maximum fluctuation is non-increasing. Minimal fluctuation is non-decreasing, so the diameter should shrink. Doesn't grow. And, uh, so you can show that um, under that initial configuration, actually the phase diameter goes to zero exponentially fast. But you have this upper this uh, decay rate and the lower decay rate are different. But you see, eventually this guy goes. Uh, if you start from some last time, then this quantity approaches to one, right? Because this quantity goes to zero at later time. So, so actually, oh, okay. First, let me let me tell you. Let me show you. Uh, this, uh, so maximum fluctuation satisfy this differential inequality almost everywhere in T. So I, I, I skip that here. And so diameter satisfy this first order, this corona time inequality. And again, the, and the row bound, you also have this, oops, this row bound. So again, if you start from the later times, then you can have almost as as optimal time decay rate, which is which is k. Okay. So, uh, so the uh, complete phase synchronization implies the complete frequency synchronization. I have ten minutes more. Okay. Uh, so you can do the same thing. So let me go go to the non-identical oscillator. So that means uh, the natural frequency are different. 
then you need a condition. So the, di the diameter of natural frequency are positive because they are different. The coupling strength is greater than the diameter of uh, natural frequency. And using this condition, you, you can solve this trigonometric equation. It has a two solutions in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. But you take first quadrant one. So if initial phase diameter is less than this guy, then you can still show that this region is invariant under the current flow. Okay. And then uh, you can show that by using that invariant set, you can show that the exponential convergence to zero in the frequency diameter. There is no end dependence. Therefore, you can generalize the kinetic regime, this particle leader to the kinetic regime. Um, now, we are only talk of, talking about the mean field interaction, so all those later are in fact each other. But you might think, well, suppose we have uh, some, uh, this communication topology is not mean field type, but it's uh, connected somehow, then can we do synchronization estimate? The answer is yes. This top of connectedness implies the, uh, the synchronization also. So, uh, so motivation is like this. So, so you have some manifold, you have a self profile agent, and they, they communicate each other. Sometimes they are, the communication is the, this two way, but sometimes it's one way. So normally, if you have this, uh, this interacting multi-agent system, then you can associate with uh, this agent system to the graph, dynamic graph. So in that case, the, the vertex corresponds to this agent. The communication, level of communication corresponds to edge between this node. Okay? But, but in, but in reality, this communication topology depends on the solution, system dynamic. So the system dynamics affects the underlying communication topology. Also, to communication topology uh, influences the uh, system dynamics. So you have nonlinear coupling. So it's, in general, it's hard to analyze. <coughs> so in control community, there's called consensus problem. So you have uh, this dynamic graph, and then certain information is flow under this dynamic graph, and then you want to show that a certain information converts to the same value. Okay, like the flocking is the velocity, synchronization is a phase or a frequency. So that's the part of the control consensus problem. Uh, more like uh, suppose you have a fireflies on the tree; they don't move. They just uh, just uh, stay in the in the in the trees, and then so we want to show that when these uh, fireflies shows the uh, the synchronization. Uh, so the model is like this, okay? Uh, so it's like a Fukushima with this uh, the chromatol with this uh, uh, communication weight. So actually, it was uh, used by the physicist. Oh. Here, uh, NK is the is the neighborhood of K uh, oscillators. So, again, if you have this N, N oscillator system, then normally you can uh, associate with a graph here. So, the question is, what are the structural conditions on the communication topology to guarantee the synchronization, and also for given communication uh, structure? find the sufficient condition of initial configuration to guarantee the synchronization. So the, the structure condition of communication topology is a connectivity. Actually, uh, so for given two node vertex, they, there is a path connecting these two uh, paths. And also, I, I didn't write down here, but there's a, here we assume that it's a communication is a symmetric. Psi okay. ij for psi jr. Then, if you do the just basic energy estimate, then you come down to here. 
Well, then you will see the, some problem, for example, uh, this one. In order to use energy estimate, you have to associate this one with, uh, with this quantity. But this is not the whole sum in LK. It's only this connected pair. For example, in Euclid case, then this term can write down this way. Therefore, by just corona inequality, gives you this exponential convergence. But now we don't have this uh, this mean field interaction. However, if you use the uh, so-called triangular inequality, so that the uh, if connected under connectedness, actually this quantity and this quantity are equivalent okay, in this sense. So if you use triangular inequality then actually you can prove, the uh, by using energy estimate, you can prove the, this uh, synchronization exponential convergence. So the conclusion is, we presented direct connection between the Kuko smell and the quantum model in the same methodology, in the same viewpoint. And uh, because if you look at the Pramato, uh, the literature on Pramato model, the most approach is algebraic. They use a spectral graph theory to estimate the second eigenvalue of the communication topology, which the second eigenvalue is called the algebraic connectivity. So it's a purely uh, algebraic. But by using this uh, differential <coughs> approach, you can provide, actually, we don't need any information on the eigenvalue. Just energy estimate gives you the same result. Okay, thank you for your attention.